one of the other teams in the region, one of the other top teams, it's like, oh, I can take a deep breath, right? Even if they don't win, because all of a sudden you move some of your toughest competition out of the running as far as points qualification goes, because they already got the spot, but the gates are now open. Let's see who can draw first blood. Both these teams with stellar performances to make it this far in the upper bracket and to go head to head. This could easily be a grand final. You certainly don't want to go anywhere. Who is going to t take it, really? I mean, in the lower bracket, North America is getting owned, but in the upper bracket, they still have a chance. Yeah, this is actually a very similar matchup to what we saw in Cloud9's first series against ABC. I think they were running the mage uh, elements also slightly different, but the strategy for Cloud9 will be the same. They lose the late game against Moonkin Elemental. If we get to 40, 50, 60% dampening, that's where Wildcard will win this matchup. Hence, Cloud9 will be the aggressor. They're going to be pushing in, trying to get damage over onto Looney, potentially. He could be someone to watch for. You can see already Cubsy getting aggressive with that Feral Affinity. That's what Cloud9 need. They need the crowd control. They need the damage. The Infernal's coming out. They're already setting a precedent for what will happen this game. Cubsy is spending more time in cat form than anything else so far this game, really dishing out a lot of extra damage. And we can see that all that damage is paying off as Morrow dips very low on health. Bounces back with a quick heal, that renewal pop. Pinned at the pillar, though, and Cubsy's still in cat form, tearing in. He's really bringing the aggression for his team, and his composition normally doesn't have a lot of lockdown, but with the Feral Affinity, he can bring extra stuns, and it's definitely important. However, it exposes him defensively as he loses the Guardian Affinity, which provides him a lot of damage reduction and frenzied regeneration to recover. So Wildcard Gaming, realizing that weakness, switched to him, Ooh. immediately punishing that Feral Affinity decision. However, as he is able to recover. Yeah, I, I like the fact that both these druids are running trinkets. Like you say, said, it's smart for Cubsy because he, he can afford to be aggressive knowing he has that line of defense of if he c gets too aggressive, he can just trink it out, try and keep himself alive. Looney as well, he probably saw what happened to poor old Askarath in the first series of the day against Cloud9. Definitely going to be running that trinket, not wanting to get one shot by the infernal setups. So I, I like I like how both these teams have set themselves up for the series. Actually, one of the things I'm noting is that Looney has had to expend a lot of mana uh, in this early game. He's starting to regen some up now. The infernal and all those big offensive cooldowns are down for Cloud9. He's just kind of trying to heal as little as possible because he knows the win condition for him is dampening, and I mean, what better team than Wildcard Gaming for that win condition, Seth? Big hits on Wealthy Man. He is able to escape to safety, but dipped fairly low, and later on in the fight, we've seen Z-Pi just erase players, so playing a dangerous game, going that low on health without ice blocking, but able to take the gamble and hold on to a vital defensive cooldown. We see Cubsy once again moving in, in cat form, and I'm curious if Looney is running the same, but now Cubsy has walked into crowd control. Both Channel and Morrow under fire. Iron Bark currently activated for Looney, so likely Morrow recovers. Channel doesn't have that same cooldown. Cubsy is now stunned. Wealthy Man gets cross crowd controlled. Good crowd control initiation here by Wildcard Ooh. Gaming. Big hits, but still no ice block. Wealthy Man holding on to that. Another risky gamble by Cloud9. Yeah, these EU elemental shamans are devastating. Every single time they go for that lasso, they build up the Earth Shock afterward. If that crits, it can hit for up to 100,000, you know, like about half the health pool. So you've got to be really careful uh, sitting through some of those lassos. If the damage is there, you know, a Mali hits, maybe a little bit of damage, a Star Surge from Maro perhaps can be absolutely devastating. A wealthy man is feeling it. He's having to back out, actually. They're pushing in. They have crowd control over on Cubsy. Might even be able to force the first ice block here. Wildcard Gaming, traditionally that melee cleave, they've played majority of their games this season as the DK Windwalker, but they are showing up on the Elemental and the Moon Kindred. Mara and Zipai, the synergy is insane. You can see why they've won the last three European Cups. Most certainly, Mara has definitely polished his balanced druid. It's ready to go here in the tournament, the Spring Finals. A spot to BlizzCon on the line in this tournament. $50,000 first place finish on the line for this tournament. And even though Wildcard Gaming are not the number one seeded team from Europe. They're definitely a top contender to be one of the best teams in Europe. Cloud9, on the other hand, are the top point earners for North America and were widely respected by basically every single player at the tournament. And if a North American team was going to do it, everyone's starting to think it's going to be Cloud9. You can really see why Cubsy able to dance between both offense and defense immaculately, immaculately adding a lot of extra stuns for his team, which they are able to bounce back with huge burst. Icy Veins Infernal available for Cloud9. These are powerhouse cooldowns, and they are waiting to pull the trigger. Yeah, and I mean, this this game goes far beyond just Cloud9 and Wildcard Gaming. The way that the BlizzCon spots go this year, right? Like one uh, from points for each region, but the three land spots could go 
go, you know, we can have four European teams or four North American teams going to BlizzCon. If you're, you know, whatever's left of Method Orange fan or if you're a Never Lucky fan, then Cloud9 <coughs> winning is one of your biggest, you know, hopes at this point. Meanwhile, Wildcard Gaming, of course, the same banner, but for Europe, ABC, Changed My Mind, all these teams, you know, sitting in that lower bracket waiting for tomorrow, watching this with anticipation. Channel gets caught up in the Lightning Lasso. Good blink count spell coming in from Wealthy Man. It's actually really intense, this game considering that the you know the double casters traditionally go to deeper dampening but cloud nine are making it that way they have to play aggressively because the later the game goes i really feel the later whether the more cloud uh, wild card are going to be advantaged probably once again moving forward with this team that barrel affinity adding in some extra edge with that extra damage really just chasing looney down i have not seen cubsy play this aggressively and with this much confidence before he looks unshaken on the stage here for the spring finals in 2019 and if you can keep adding this extra damage look at looney's mana it's devastated dampening at seven percent although now channel getting blasted by morrow unending resolve has to be exchanged he's still at very low health it may not be enough and now morrow is exposed interrupted on a cyclone iron bark is faded Bark skin available in one second off the back of that lockout. Mara stabilizes. Solar Beam committed to interrupt Chaos Bull. Cubsy now sees an opportunity to move in. He's getting huge bleeds and damage over time effects on the entire team, maximizing it really. I'd love to see a damage breakdown for Cubsy. He's playing phenomenally right now with that Feral Affinity. Yeah, he's playing fantastically. It's it's one of those things where, you know, Gorecki is the big streamer from North America. He made Feral Affinity famous, and I think a lot of Druids have followed suit, but Cubsy's also been using this build for a very long time. It's just a very North American strategy. I really like it. A lot of the European Druids have been picking up on it as well. We see the Trinket actually forced uh, on Cubsy there from that Lightning Lasso. So maybe a little bit scared for Channels. Maybe that wasn't needed, but the wall's also down now. As 12% dampening starts to ramp up. Wildcard Gaming are forcing cooldowns. That was the Incarnation, yes, uh, from Mario. So maybe with that down, it's going to be hard for them to generate pressure, but they're really forcing Cloud9 back. Looney's mana isn't great. They're going to have to try set up a drink for him. That could be one of the win conditions for Cloud9 here, but oh! it's looking really difficult for Cubsy to just top his team off right now. I mean, that's because he's juggling, dealing damage, and healing the team throughout Wildcard's pressure. Bash, this could, be it. this could be the end of the match if there's any crowd control. A Cyclone. How is Channel going to hold out? He's managed to avoid the damage by line of siding out the pillar. Shadow Fury trying to break up the crowd control. Gets stunned and denied, but it's not necessary. Crowd control has now faded. Cubsy stabilizes. Cyclone Channel denying the Innervate heals. Well done here. Does slow down the mana a bit, but Looney's already so far behind that that's not going to be enough in itself. Looney needs to try and find an opportunity to drink and regenerate mana. If he is unable to do so, I don't think it's looking too good for his team. This Feral Affinity could add enough damage that they can find a kill, even though these wizards are more mobile. Cloud9's extra damage from Cubsy is starting to try and sort of tilt this game in their favor. We do see finally some counter pressure here with Channel and Welty Man getting bursted. Cubsy still interrupted at around the corner. Doctor for cover gets back into the fight. So I'm trying to stabilize and hold on to the iron part, but this Stormkeeper of Zipai, as soon as he's out of that polymorph, could be devastating. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the mana bar from Looney is like a little bit deceptive, I think, because he hasn't had the opportunity to drink, whereas Cubs he has. And I, I also just think Cloud9 is the team that needs to be aggressive in this matchup to some extent. Uh, Looney will have the double innovate in deep dampening. Mauro and Looney, of course, Ooh. both able to provide that to him. And I think he's just done a good job of like being efficient. He won't drink during the game because the Warlock will always stop him. Channel is always going to be on top of that. And I mean, now, once again, it's the Infernals coming out of Channel's, this big oh! and he just one shots Mauro. I, I didn't expect that for a second there. He still had defensive points. <laughs> Two trinkets, Iron Bark renewal. The Nine taking the lead early on in Wildcard Gaming, forced onto a different composition and one that we are are going to see for the first time today so if you're just tuning in there's still surprises for us even though we're six series into the day and only two left we are in the upper bracket of the spring finals the arena world championship series yeah i mean like like we've been saying this could easily be a grand final so this may not be the first or the last time these two teams meet but cloud nine gets first blood uh in the upper bracket here it's been looking fantastic for them the entire 
spring season, the spring split, like I wasn't casting it, but I was watching every single one of these games, and these guys have been incredibly impressive. Channel, Wealthy Man, and Cubsy. Like we talk about Channel and Snuts, but Cubsy and Wealthy Man, they've been the back end. They were two, they were Cloud9 2015, and they've been really reinforcing these two Warlock kind of known players. Blizzo now in the opener, Life Cocoon coming out early from Looney. You see double Relentless coming in from both of these monks. Unsurprising given how much crowd control Cloud9 likes to put out. And touch of death activated Blizzo. Wants to tear in. He's going after Channel. Zipai has been putting his pressure towards Wealthy Man. They're trying to go after two targets and burn down the mana of Cubsy. Innervate activated instantly, realizing that Cubsy is going to have to heal inefficiently to power through this split damage strategy. And that Innervate timing allows him to stay at maximum mana throughout that pressure. And Wildcard Gaming, that seems to be the main win condition. With the map selected and the composition selected, it looks like they want to try and burn Cubsy out on mana, deny him on drinks, and find pressure and burst in between but defensively focused on their strategies and aiming for dampening likely yeah I, I mean the the reason that this composition is really nice from wildcard gaming is that the elemental will always have a pillar to sit on because it's a small map that's why hope point works so well he can just kind of you know sit on the pillars get those lassos get those flame shocks and then blizzo and lunia always within transcendence ridge you know they'll be able to portal out of danger uh, both of them I, I i assume they're both running human so even though they're relentless they have the you know the break uh, with the ratio to break out of any stun if they really need it. And I mean, it's just, it's like, a, it's, it's an intelligent pick from Wildcard Gaming. Uh, whether it will work in the kind of deep dampening, like Cubsy's gonna look for a lot of resets. You can see Zipai getting caught out right now is a big question because, I mean, it's actually hard for them to, I would say it's hard for them to get a good connection over onto Channels with Blizzard on the Windwalker just because of how much crowd control and slows there are coming out. Even the Warlock can be slippery at that point. Yeah, Cubsy knows that man is going to be the name of the game. He's sneaking away immediately, but denied. Wealthy Man gets bursted in the midst of all that, and Cubsy doesn't get to regenerate any mana. Wildcard Gaming start to establish a lead, and you can tell that they came prepared for this tournament and this series in particular, realizing the threat of Cloud9's Mage Warlock Restoration Druid, and perhaps these small map selected double monk composition mana strategies could be enough but they need to make sure that they're staying on top of cubsy why is nobody stopping cubsy he just got full mana and that's a bit of a botched move by wildcard gaming i i actually don't think the mana pool from cubsy is you don't think so yeah because the thing is the druid and dampening burns through the mana so quickly healing a warlock that i think until dampening you don't overextend Looney's mana will always be fantastic in this matchup as long as his team doesn't take too much damage. So I think until dampening starts, this is kind of like how we saw Never Lucky playing on Colo's side. You know, these double monk teams, they love the pillar. They love to just sit back, avoid damage until that win condition later in the game. Touch of death available for Blizzo. He may just get an ice block without it. Huge he's, damage. Oh. He's locked on Frost. What? what? He's actually locked on Frost. He snaps, but he does not get the ice block off. And we're, we're like settling down, waiting I'm for just some. Be like able to set something like that up again, or is Cloud9 going to find another win with the composition that we've really known them for this season? Well, we're about to find out. Wildcard Gaming sneak away with that kill on Wealthy Man early on, a bit unpredicted, but that is the number one thing with Elemental Shamans is their unpredictability. Zipai already under fire, ducking for cover with his team around the corner. Lightning Lasso spell locked by Channel. Very important to deny that Lightning Lasso as frequently as possible, and Cloud9 on top of it already. Cubsy moves in. All of Cloud9 move in. Three members collapse. Huge damage. Looney trying to recover. Gladiator's Ooh, Medallion through this push. This time. Desperately trying to stay th alive throughout it. If they have more Gladiator's Maledicts, it could be trouble. Cubsy yep. secures another stun. Looney manages to make it around the corner, but all three members still low on health. Yeah, I, I mean, I just I was going to compare it to game one when neither of them trinketed basically the same coil. Here they both trinketed. They know the time where Cloud9 push for the win is that Ooh. internal play. They get a nice hibernate there, but I actually think the hibernate's not too bad because it can just get tremored by Zipai. So actually, probably an intelligent play from Looney. Honestly, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but puts them on the polymorph VR essentially for free. Uh, and I just want to, one other thing I wanted to point out in the in the midst of all that play was that Mara actually, uh, actually, no, never mind. I, I, I saw something I didn't think I saw, but the double trinket coming down, the Infernal not traded out or traded out by Channel means that now they don't have that big offensive, but they should push in here because, you know, double trinket being forced in the start is very good for Talna. Cubsy gets swapped too. Wildcard Gaming trying to capitalize on that Feral Affinity selection, but unable to push Cubsy around too easily. Now Morrow getting blasted, Looney easily heals that with Swift Mend. Wealthy Man gets swapped too. 
Don't want to see him going down without an ice block again here on game number three, or else they're going to lose their swing match advantage, which is of utmost importance between two teams of this caliber and how many compositions they can bring to the table. So Cloud9 need to win on their map choice. Can they do it now is the question. Cubsy is just chasing z in cat form. Once, and once again, if I had a timer, I feel like he spends more time in cat form. Finally could be punished for it as he is lightning lasted around the corner, but he's on top of the demonic gateway, which allowed him to easily escape to safety and now recover for free. Maro z low on health, and Gentleman and Wealthy Man are playing entirely differently than we normally expect to see. Usually they're just sitting back, relaxing midfield, just tossing out some chaos bolts and frost bolts, but in this particular matchup, they are all about aggression, chasing down wildcard gaming and closing the game out as soon as possible. They know if this goes too far into dampening the balance druid's damage over time effects, as well as Zipai's instant cast burst are going to overwhelm them. Cloud9 are on the clock, but they're capitalizing well. Yep, I completely agree with that. Cloud9 are definitely one of the most scary teams you can have running at you for the double wizards. It's something that we already saw wildcard gaming fall to once and once again here, but Cubsy, they're trying to turn it around with the punish. Maldex coming in, forcing only the Iron Bark though. No trinket forced out there. A bit unfortunate for wildcard gaming. They would have loved to have got that trinket. Make Cubsy think twice when he goes for these offensive plays. Now a big swap over onto Looney. He's trading very greedily here. Once again, also not using the trinket despite having no bark skin for that stun. Now he's going to cross the map. Marrow coming in with the peels. Counterspelled on that cyclone. Looney should be able to top himself, but at the expense of a fair bit of mana. Yeah, a lot of mana, but let's see if he can manage to find a drink, which on this map he should be able to. Well, the man cycloned at low health. Chaos Bolt's on Maro. He's forced to retreat away, unable to follow up anymore, so Wealthy Man easily recovers. Looney is trying to sneak away. Wealthy Man, I do believe, sees him blinking over. Did they manage to stop him is the question. I think he's sneaking around in stealth, looking to figure out what is the best position to start a drink. Or maybe even just stay in stealth and make them think that he's regenerated mana or just regenerate mana simply from being out of combat. But Looney is not drinking in his current position, just relying on the out of combat mana regeneration to at least give him a tiny bounce back as Maro and z are now getting attacked. We do see Cloud9 pushing forward. Cubsy trying to get some cat form damage out onto, I believe, Morrow here shortly, as well as Looney going after all three members of Wildcard Gaming, forcing Looney to keep heal over time effects on three players and expend more mana than that of himself because he only has to heal Channel and Wealthy Man. He is able to avoid a lot of damage. Wealthy Man gets Lightning Lassoed. Seepai trying to find a kill, but Channel backs him up once again. Solid defense on both sides. Yep, they, they got the trinket out of Channel there, which is obviously good for them both offensively and defensively, since it now means they can theoretically put some crowd control into Channel should he use his Inferno uh, and deny a lot of that incoming damage. We see the coils coming out here. They're committing a fair bit. This is the incarnation from Mario, so they do need to respect it a little bit. If Wealthy Man was going to die without Ice Block, that would probably be the time where it would happen, so he's going to have to uh, play a bit careful. It looks like it was just a little proc incarnation from Mario, so that one only lasts six to eight seconds. Now we see another swap coming over onto Looney. Preemptive Bucks, actually the Trinket coming out as well. I, I wonder if that was an overstep from Looney. That's definitely going to prompt an infernal push from Cloud9 momentarily using the trinket, the bark skin, whilst in bear form, just respecting the damage perhaps too much. That icy vein's up in about 15 seconds. Infernal available. Cloud9 should push on Looney momentarily. At the same time, if they decide to push, Maro has incarnation and Zipai is Stormkeeper, so it could backfire on them. They need to push, though. If they don't end the game before deep dampening, then they will be overwhelmed, so it's a risky decision. So far, not getting too much value off this Infernal. Zipai goes after Cubsy in a swap. Could be devastating here as he gets bursted, dispelling that Glyre's Maledict, healing absorption effect, and recovering back to full health. Looney, he's got no bar skin for 13. If there's a stun available, he could easily go down. There's pressure on Zipai to try and bait Looney out in the midfield. Channel gets hit hard. Cubsy trades his iron bark. Needs to be enough. Desperation for Cloud9 as they polymorph Zipai, abandoning their pressure to stabilize Channel. Cubsy getting interrupted. Could be trouble for Wealthy Man. He's already at half health. Huge Earth Shock <laughs> connects on the Wealthy Man, and he is going to yeah. respect the damage and Ice Block. Fair trade for the Incarnation tomorrow. Yeah, I, I don't blame him after what happened in the previous game. Wealthy Man, good Ice Block coming in there, but I actually want to commend Wildcard Gaming. They realized that they forced Channel Trinket earlier in the game, and they put every single stun, every single crowd control onto him during that Infernal. Great plays from them. These guys know how to avoid dying. They made the mistake once. They're not going to mistake, make the same mistake two games in the same series. So now the onus is really on Cloud9. You know, that was the Infernals. That was the Icy Veins. How do they break through uh, the Stonewall defense? Ultiman once again getting bursted. Cubsy has to exchange 
both Barkskin and Iron Bark as he was being targeted as well as Wealthy Man. So their team is vulnerable in terms of defense. And we're not even deep into dampening, and we're starting to see Cloud9 struggle. If Lumi can hold out on mana, prevent himself from being swapped to, Wildcard Gaming are looking solid. And this is the swing match. A lot on the line here. Triple Shadow Fury stalls the damage long enough for Cubsy to stabilize Wealthy Man. MVP Channel once again. Z Pi now low on health. Wealthy Man tosses down that frozen orb, but Z Pi is avoiding the heat for now, ducking around with Looney, catching some healing surges. Solar Beam denies the Chaos Bolt. Looney trying to stop Cubsy from drinking as they move across the map. Do they know where he is is the question. How much mana will Cubsy get off the back of this? If he can go back to at least full, not too much mana, but still a lead. Yep, it was a good drink attempt from Cubsy there. Every time they do that, though, of course, they are kind of playing into wildcard gaming's hands a little bit since it means Wealthy Man and Channimals are, you know, focusing on avoiding damage at that moment in time so their healer doesn't have to have the onus of healing. Another lasso coming in from Wealthy Man. Huge damage. You see the Grey Health coming in from the Maldic. Full Bash on Cubsy. They're being really greedy here. A second Ice Block comes out. This is starting to look worse and worse for the North American number one squad. Yeah, the pressure that Cloud9 had is not there anymore. Cubsy really hasn't been able to deal a lot of damage to that Feral Affinity, and without his lockdown and extra damage, Cloud9 are just not threatening, and Wildcard Gaming are starting to play with them, and as we get deeper into dampening, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to recover. They've got no ice blocks. Three minutes away for that. Baldyman's trying to hide around the corner. Kind of left Channimal behind. Nope, now Cubsy jumps in, but gets Ursula's Ward Packs back midfield. Not able to really connect any stuns just yet. Looney's trying to drink, but he's not able to. There's a Fell Hunter chasing him. Frozen Orb is placed down. Wealthy Man wants to burst somebody, but he's the one actually being bursted. Cubsy trades Iron Bark. It's denied on his defense by a well timed Cyclone. Channimal trying to carry the team. Double Mortal Coil. Potential Shadow Fury. Not able to find it. Stops the Cyclone at least. Z Pi left behind. Likely going to be the target here. He's actually left very far behind. Cool down overlap by Wildcard Gaming and an opening for Cloud9 now moving forward if they don't even just kill him now. Yeah, I mean, they forced everything from Zpi right there. That wasn't even the Infernal. Definitely going to be an opening for them. The Iron Bark also came down there. They do have Trinkets available on Looney and Mara. It's going to be up to them to make the correct play here. Keep Zpi alive. Their teammate is definitely in peril at this moment in time. On the flip side, though, you see the Incarnation is available for Morrow. They could go for a counter kill on Wealthy Man when Cloud9 go for this next push. I would love to see that from them. Think it would be very smart. Channimal taking a lot of damage right now. Cubsy doesn't want to trinket for his Warlock. He knows Channimal can just line of sight, avoid damage. This is the big damage here over onto Wealthy Man. A counter spell onto z though, denies that Lightning Lasso. That could have been a big moment there for Wildcard. Could have been a kill for Wildcard, and if they can take this away from Cloud9, they'll take the swing match advantage. Should this go to a game five, they will be able to pick the map and the counter composition. Very important for their team overall in terms of their strategy. So Cloud9 need to clamor something together. Dampening is going nowhere but up. Mana is now in favor of Looney. It's looking worse and worse for Cloud9. Cubsy needs to pull off something quick. They've got the cooldowns to do it, though, with Icy Veins and Call Infernal, but Cubsy gets clotheslined. Lightning Lasso in midfield. Channel backs him up, though. And once again, just having Channel on your team time and time again to save you with perfectly timed crowd control. You just have to give him credit. Cubsy stays alive as a result of that. Cloud9 waiting to get out of crowd control and charge forward, but Wealthy Man's getting blasted. Channel drops to call Infernal to try and clothesline him. Once again, protecting his team and trying to counter aggress at the same time. Fearing Maro out in the midfield. Channel trying to build up some huge damage with that rain of fire. Every soul shard he spends during Infernals ramps up his damage further and further, but he solar beamed. After that solar beam, he gets bashed. They've prevented Channimals from getting any sort of counter pressure out. Perfect denial. Now Wealthy Man getting bursted, but they do manage to at least interrupt the lightning lasso. Icy Veins pop. They need to get a kill now. Cloud9 have to get a kill now. If they do not, they will be overwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, they're looking pretty good. They forced everything from Wildcard on this push. This is the Infernal. If they survive this, Wildcard will surely win this match. They've played to their win condition. Wealthy Man has been forced to retreat, and now it's starting to look like Wildcard have done it in this game. They did get the trinket from Looney. There's no Astral Ship. There's no Iron Bark. There's no Bark Skin. There are very few cooldowns for Wildcard Gaming at this moment in time, but because of those two Ice Blocks forced earlier in the game, Wealthy Man wasn't able to fully oh, no. Now we see Channel caught up the innovate iron bug all of these core being overlapped from cloud nine we're at almost 40 percent dampening 40 percent healing reduction for both these healers and the broad damage that wildcard will do throughout the game is starting to add up things are snowballing out of control can wealthy man and channel do it can they close it out and keep the swing match advantage for their team or wildcard gaming going Ooh. to just destroy them morrow is pinned down in bear form unable to really counter pressure looney is struggling his mana is so low potentially cloud nine can overwhelm them but we see cubs in a bash into a cyclone channel all alone 
He's trying to get around the corner, manages to, but eats an earth shock right before he could. Drain lifing off the elemental to recover himself while Cubsy is cyclone, trying to take every single advantage that he can in potentially the final seconds of this match. That was the triple Maldic push there from Cloud9, and Mario didn't even trade Renewal. Now you can see Wildcard Gaming, they taste blood in the water. That incarnation for Mario up in 10 seconds. Huge damage potential on the side of Wildcard Gaming momentarily here. Double Ice Block is available for Wealthy Man, oh. so he survived till his defense, which is very good, but Chanimals could well be the kill target. I think Chanimal is definitely going to be the target at this point with two Ice Blocks available, although having pressure on two targets is going to be better than one for Wildcard Gaming. Anyone could die at this point. I could easily see cross kills in this game. You do not want to go anywhere as it is down to the wire. Maros is getting owned. He needs one more second. Connects to Renewal. That may not be enough. Chanimal is dipping low. This could go down to a two versus two at 45% dampening. Mara manages to hold out just a bit longer. Nether Ward denies the kill on Chanimal. Drain life. Anything to stay alive. Anything to keep the swing match in their favor. Cloud9 try and crawl back in this fight. Mara gets interrupted. Cubsy jumps in. He knows it's do or die. He has to add extra damage to the team if they want to win. But if he spends too long in cap form, he's not healing the team. But it's a risk he has to take. He's got no mana. Chanimal's so low. Double mortal coil. Can Chanimal pull off the miracle? I mean, actually, Looney was able to sit down for a drink a little bit earlier. He restored the mana. He has the advantage over Cubsy right now. But somehow, someway, Cloud9 survived. The incarnation is down. Cubsy is going on offense. Chanimal's not even there. Mara so low on health, down to 30%. Camping that bear form, not dealing any damage at this moment in time. Cubsy is still in cat form, dealing damage. It's a delicate game. It's a dangerous game. Cloud9 versus Wildcard Gaming, the swing match. Game three, Infernal Infer Lands. Cloud9 are so close to securing this. Mara Looney, they're on the run. They don't have much. These Infernals are going to be devastating. If Chanimal gets any Chaos Bolts off, it's going to be the end of the match. He doesn't even maybe need it. They're just taking him out. Shadow Fury lands. Chaos Bolt gets Solar Beam to the last second. <laughs> Mara ducks for cover. Any Chaos Bolt is going to close this. Cubsy is stunned up. Chanimal moves in. Mara gets bursted. Where's the Chaos Bolt? He needs to get it. He gets Lightning Lassoed. Mortal Coil. Chaos Bolt gets casted. It's going to be Ooh. good. Mara gets taken down. And Cloud9 keep the swing match advantage. Poland, they looked pretty good. Like, I, I feel like you have to say that land, they, they looked pretty strong. Yeah, that's the best they've ever looked. And it's funny that you mentioned the ping because Chanimal is from Australia. Uh, after their first match, he actually, after the first match, he came up to me and said, well, I have zero ping. How can I lose? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, exactly. Right. Still still an all-American hero in my book, though. Everything that he's done for <laughs> NA. But let's, let's take a look at Cloud9 That's versus American Wildcard Nets. Gaming. Him and Ben Ruki, man. Him and Ben Ruki. <laughs> Cloud9 going to be leading in this series. <laughs> All right. Zipai, the target of choice here. Cubsy is still playing with confidence in that Feral Affinity role. Adding some extra damage and maybe an early kill. If they can close this out, they'll advance in the upper bracket. They're on match point. There's lots of damage, and it's not stopping. Huge heals out from Looney. Potential way of the crane opportunity for him here as the frozen orb is placed. Deciding not to go for it. Wealthy man blinks away. No, now going for the way of the crane. Gonna be going after Chanimal. Iron Park appears to be enough right now to stabilize Chanimal through these hits. Is it gonna be? Nether Ward now at 50%. Denies any sort of follow-up burst. Looney's way of the crane is gonna be fading, and with it, the added damage bonus. Zipai now in a better position, able to duck around the corner should he need to avoid Chaos Bolts. Infernals are down. Chanimal looking to ramp up. Curious to see if they go after Blizzo with these big Chaos Bolts, or if they're gonna go after Zipai once again. Blizzo gets stunned up by Cubsy. Once again, great utilization of that Feral Affinity, sneaking away, dropping combat, going into stealth to be able to gain access to that rake stun holding blizzo down in place for the wizard friends channel and wealthy man to have at him let's see what cubsy can do here blizzo is dishing out a ton of pain channel is going to reposition downstairs and towards the wall this way if blizzo overextends he moves past two points of line of sight for looney to heal him so rather than overextending he's going to switch targets but if he switches targets then channel's left open so good awareness by channel there to reposition now he can freely cast some chaos bolts yeah, I actually, I really like the way that Cloud9 has changed the way they're playing this game. Like, previously, even in this matchup, they played quite aggressively, I think. But now, they've kind of taken a step back. They're like, okay, we're not playing against uh, Moonkin Elemental, where we clearly need to be very aggressive and forcing the issue. They're playing against the Windwalker, and if there's things Wizards like to do, it's, you know, sit back, attack the Windwalker, attack the melee, abuse the melee. It's a classic uh, situation for a team like this. And Cloud9 have definitely adapted their play style between Game 2, where we saw this matchup, and Game 4. There's sitting back a bit more, Wealthy Man's avoiding more damage, and hence, Wildcard Gaming are being forced to attack Channimals, and Channimals is a little harder to kill. That said, he's taking a fair bit of damage, and Cubsy has to react with the Iron Bug. Ring of Peace bounces
Francis Channel around the corner and out of line of sight. And Cubsy has a lot of recovery to do, a ton of work. Wildcard Gaming switched their burst to Wealthy Man. He pre activates Temporal Shield. This absorbs a huge amount of damage during that lightning lasso and heals him back to full. Good awareness on Wealthy Man's part, realizing that swap was coming. This way now Cubsy can sneak away, potentially drink. But on the small maps, Wildcard Gaming selected. Will he be able to find that opportunity? Looks like he managed to sneak away, but I'm not sure how much mana he's been able to regenerate just yet. Touch of Death gets activated. Blizzo, rather than denying the drink, is trying to counter aggress and they will trade mana for cooldowns but wealthy man is still low on health Cubs needs to recover two targets that's not going to be cheap to heal through now he's still crowd controlled and two members are still low we do anticipate wildcard gaming's composition to take this but we did not see the composition play out long enough to really know if it will however going to game five if you're wildcard gaming do you take the gamble do you run with the windwalker on a large map i'm not sure i mean it looks solid into the mage warlock so far there's just constant pressure looney is maximum mana the whole time it seems like why wouldn't wildcard gaming play this composition the entire series yeah I, I mean i guess we'll have to see what happens as dampling starts to rank up because the misweaver is very strong early game like the mana is great uh but as the game gets longer and longer i feel like the misweaver will lack the throughput healing of the restoration druid and that could be a potential weakness for wildcard gaming and i think cloud nine recognizes that a little bit that's why they're sitting back they're happy to kind of play this slightly slower game here knowing that eventually let's say the game does go to dampening as wildcard gaming often take us to dampening then maybe they have their chances there, you know? It's not guaranteed that Wildcard wins that. It's definitely going to be scary for Wealthy Man to make it that far, but he's been playing it well so far. If zero mistakes come out, I think Cloud9's got a fair chance in this one. All right, Channel exposed for another minute and 40 seconds without that unending resolve. A vital defensive cooldown, that red icon below his health. When there's a number on it, it means he can't use it for that amount of time. And without it, he could get blown up by that of Zipai and Blizzo. Touch of Death available in 24 seconds. Let's see what Blizzo can get done with that. Cubsy has done a great job maintaining his mana despite the mana or the map disadvantage in that regard. Still keeping even with Looney as we get closer to dampening. Channel trinketing, nether warding to try and avoid some Gladiator's Maledix, but now no trinket for him to avoid the touch of death available in five seconds and still being pressured even without it. Stormkeeper available for Zipai. He could line up some huge burst potentially for the team and close this out and take it to a game five. Cooldown's available and wild card gaming wait to pull the trigger. Yep, they're waiting a little bit. Blizzard's been doing a fantastic dancing game, like we talked about the top US Windwalkers being impactful, but as I say that, here comes the uh, Infernal. Actually, an excellent Thunderstorm from Zipai. The Infernal does a lot of cleave damage, so Thunderstorming it away will buy them a fair bit. That's probably like 50k damage at least that he prevented with that. Now they're swapping over to Blizzard, but Blizzard's been dancing in and out on this small map beautifully. This guy's played 44 games for Wildcard Gaming this season, and 42 of them have been on that Windwalker Monk. So he's very familiar with the class now, more so than last year, I would argue, and he's been fantastic. Looks like they're dealing with this Infernal like pros, but you've got to be careful because that one Chaos Bolt could change anything. Even one Chaos Bolt during this call Infernal could close the game out, so Wildcard Gaming cannot afford to disrespect this time in the match, but those Infernals have now faded. They will be feeling a lot more safe. No icy veins for Wealthy Man. If I'm Wildcard Gaming, it's time to go. It's time to make a push, and they are doing so. Wealthy Man down at half, and Cubs looking to regenerate mana. Jumping in and catching Blizzo. Big combo by Wealthy Man off the back of that stun. Blizzo rolls out a line of sight, likely to relay that transcendence, but it's it left in midfield. If he mm. uses that, he will still be exposed to casted spells, and that could cost him his life later on, and I'm curious to see if it does. Yeah, it's something that he needs to be mindful of. I think a lot of the time Cloud9's been kind of kiting downstairs onto that mesh, so maybe he thinks as long as it's just somewhere on a higher arc, but I agree with you. There's no reason not to put it behind the box, right? Like, it would just be better positioning. Something that Blizzo maybe needs to think about, but he's going aggro right now over onto Channels, keeping up the, the pressure, keeping up the mortal strike effect, reducing uh, any incoming healing from Cubsy, I think is smart, just trying to you know, keep some pressure going, give them something to think about so they don't get too aggressive on towards Looney. But now, dampening starting to rank up. It's up to 11%. Blizzard actually used the touch of Karma there a little bit preemptively. He wasn't really low on health. Maybe he was expecting a stun to come in, but I, I, I wonder if they can punish that, maybe. Curious to see if they can moving forward. While Car Gaming have to take this if they want to stay in the upper bracket. They're swapping the Cubsy. They're desperate. Can they pull it off? 
Is that the question? There's a lot of damage. Got your safeguard. Is that going to be enough? It may not be. Cubsy tries to gate across the map on a sliver of health, managing to stay alive throughout that onslaught. But as dampening continues to mount, another swap like that, and Cubsy's probably not making it out of that situation alive. Looney still has a lot of mana in the tank for Way of the Crane, and that is a threat that they need to be ready for, as at any moment he could activate it and increase his damage immensely. Yeah, uh, as Dampening's starting to ramp up, there's definitely uh, some pressure coming out of Wildcard Gaming. Good swap over onto Cubsy there. He had about 20 seconds left on his trinket, so they had to pull the trigger there. Almost able to get the kill with the triple Maldic, but of course, that is a huge commitment from Wildcard Gaming. So now those Maldics are down for two minutes. Cloud9 can be even more aggressive. Interestingly enough, Cubsy has been really playing this game passively. Like, his mana is full. He could be more in their face, but I think they, he knows that, you know, the double monk can definitely get the swaps over with the double leg sweep, the uh, the stun from the elemental shaman. There's so many threats on the side of wildcard gaming, and this is <laughs> this is really going to go down to the last couple of seconds, and I, I'm not... I'm honestly don't, not sure who wins this. We haven't really seen the elemental Windwalker play out during the Cubs. Uh, we've heard a lot about it. This is the first time we're seeing it on the stage. I'd be more confident in it if Cubsy was out of mana, which is what he is supposed to be on this map. But he has full mana. In that situation, I think that Cloud9 still have it. And despite the advantage that Wildcard Gaming were looking to establish, it's, it's just not there. They're running out of time. Let's see if they can do it. Call Infernals are available for Chanimal. And once again, that's a big threat. That green icon with the skull if that goes on cooldown, Channel's activated it, and his Chaos Bolts are going to increasingly get bigger and bigger. Wealthy Man has Icy Veins as well. I would say it's the blue icon below his health bar, but there's a lot of them, so <laughs> at this point it may not be the best decision, but any cooldown on that bottom bar is huge burst for the mage, although he is in trouble. He I'm stabilizes. Wealthy Man baits Blizzo downstairs. He's got him snared up. Channel could set up for big Chaos Bolts on Blizzo. He is able to not actually avoid the Chaos Bolt, but at least get out of line of sight, catch some Vivifies. Cubsy moves in, trying to support the team and hold them in place. I will say that Wealthy Man's Blizzards are perfectly placed, pinning the team down and resetting the cooldown of his Frozen Orb quite frequently. Ursul's Vortex pulling the team back in, and Cloud9 are starting to build some momentum. This is one of the advantages that Warlock brings over the Shadow Priest too. Like you, you have so much damage you can put on a team behind a pillar. Obviously the Blizzard and the Frozen Orb, Cubsy jumping in with the stuns, the Ursul's Vortex to force them away. The Channels also brings a fair bit with the Cataclysm, the Infernals, you know? Like dampening going up and sitting behind a pillar isn't necessarily going to keep Wildcard Gaming alive in this matchup. They have to go for some big aggressive push, I think, either on Channels or Wealthy Man. My guess would probably be Channels because he doesn't have, you know, the two immunity ice blocks which Wildcard Gaming haven't forced just in this game. I'm not sure what percentage they pull the trigger though, because I mean, so far, you know, neither team's been willing to even give up as much as a cooldown. Channel's now being the target of choice for Blizzo, but he always takes the worst part of the exchange because of those stuns, because of those oh. kiting, and he just has to expose himself. I love that positioning from Channel. He was on the Demonic Gateway, realizing that Touch of Death was available, and as soon as it was activated, he uses the Demonic Gateway beside Cubsy and in line inside of Wealthy Man. So if Blizzo wants to overextend and get that burst, he exposes himself to potentially going down. So it was perfect positioning, strategical play from Channel here on Dalaran Sewers, and likely to close. Big Mortal Coil. Blizzo barely gets the Touch of Karma, redirecting the damage to a different target other than himself. z gets polymorphed away. Wealthy Man just pausing out the fight, waiting for an opportunity, waiting for that Infernal, waiting for Channel. Yep, they get a good double stun. Really nice play from Blizzo there. That's a rare positional mistake from Cubsy. They're looking to punish this right here, right now. Channel down to 40% health. The Infernal comes out. This is the counter play from Cloud9, oh. but it's so much damage. The wall, the Iron Buck, big defensives overlapped, and Blizzo's like, yep, I got what I wanted. I didn't have to commit my touch of death. Transcendence behind the pillar. Now he needs to avoid damage on this Infernal. If they can stay alive here, rotate until that touch of karma and touch of death come up in about 50 seconds. Cloud9 will not have the answers. Finally, a win condition potentially opens up for Wildcard. This is still a hard fought battle for Wildcard Gaming. Even if they manage to take it, they're not going to have the map advantage or the comp advantage for game number five. So they're going to have to battle it out to the absolute bitter end between these Titans from both North America and the European region. Chanimal, he's pinned down. Ooh, not much defense. Stun. Triple stun lock combo by Wildcard Gaming as they look to close. Lightning Lasso could be lethal. Nether Ward on low health. Ten more seconds. Cubs, he needs eight more seconds. Is he going to make it to that point? 
Chanimal's trying to buy him time. Looney knows that they're overwhelming Chanimal. He's going to commit the Life Cocoon preemptively to just allow Blizzard to stay in. But once again, Chanimal with perfect positioning. Gateways tries to get to safety, is able to at least avoid Z-Pai. Z-Pai has polymorphed out of line of sight. He's out of the fight. He can't add any pressure to the team. This is allowing Chanimal an opportunity to breathe, an opportunity to just close this series out. Can they pull it off, Adrian? But this, I, I don't think so. This is the win condition I was talking about. Touch of Karma and Touch of Death available. I'd love to see Blizzo just commit some of those cooldowns offensively. Cubsy, no trinket, no wall on Chanimal. The Iron Bark, I don't think it'll be enough at 45% dampening. Blizzo dropping low, but he has both of his defensive cooldowns. They're going for the all-in. They pull the trigger. Here comes the Touch of Death. Chanimal's without the big healing from the Soul Leech this deep into dampening. A good early Iron Bark from Cubsy. Is this actually going to be enough? The crowd control from Wealthy Man, he's playing it perfectly. Triple Sheep, Fizz coming out. Oh, so yeah. much crowd control from this Mage Lock Druid. The Touch of Karma from Blizzo, but Chanimal's has somehow, some way uh, survived. Is he still going to stay up? I'm not sure. There's the lasso. The trinket comes out. It's 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 anyone's guess, Sid. I mean, at this point, 50% dampening. No mana, no cooldowns. It's likely to be wild card gaming's game. Cubsy just not able to connect the heels, and Chanimal will fall in game number four. We're going all the way. It's one of the teams going to do it right here and now. Is it going to be Cloud9 or wild card gaming? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the upper bracket between Cloud9 and Wildcard Gaming. It's come down all the way to game number five. But because Cloud9 won the blind pick and kept their swing match advantage in a narrow victory on Ash Rain's Fall earlier on, they now hold all of the cards here in game number five. So I'm, I'm just so happy. Like last time I cast it was BlizzCon. Now for the spring finals, my first cast back in 2019, Cloud9 versus Wildcard Gaming, the series we've been anticipating forever has gone to game five. It doesn't get much better than this, ladies and gentlemen. The spring finals, the best teams in Europe and North America vying for that first BlizzCon spot of 2019. Cloud9 and Wildcard Gaming, two of the top contenders for that spot. And I mean, I honestly couldn't tell you who's going to win this one. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Looney switching over to Miss Weaver makes a little bit of a change up here for the team, and he will not need to drink as frequently as Cubsy, so potentially an edge there. I do like the Miss Weaver balance druid combination with Innervate. It makes a healer's spells free, including Way of the Crane, which is probably the most expensive spell for a healer in the game. Morrow, though, getting bursted early on as Looney sits through crowd control. No follow up, but if he gets interrupted, it could be it. Decides to trade Life Cocoon rather than being interrupted and unable to. So a preemptive measure that Looney takes here. Precautionary. And I'm curious to see how Looney navigates this matchup because we don't usually see Miss Weaver selected into a mage as they are so exposed to crowd control, especially on Tolveron Arena. This is probably going to be the most difficult game Looney has played of his 2019 tournament life. Yeah, this is... Uh, playing a Miss Weaver into Mage Warlock is very difficult because as a misweaver your only avoidance for crowd control is your partners and you know how you play the line of sight you don't have a wind shear you don't have shape shift from a druid it's very difficult and i mean looney is the healer you'd want here you know his misweaver is the only character in this tournament that's over 3000 rated on either ladder he's been playing it fantastically and this build with the I think it's called chrys chrysalis or something like this is the honor talent which reduces the cooldown on uh, the the bubble for the for the misweaver alongside the azurite talent that you can play the burst of life basically means that you have about a 55 second on that life cocoon and that is the kind of only reason that misweavers are okay into mages is because you can play that you can kind of do those preemptive life cocoons and it gives you enough time to stabilize through the counter spells which cloud nine have been so good at landing so cubsy has de decided to not run with cyclone instead running the honor talent mark of the wild which is super effective against both balance druids and elemental shamans reducing all of the damage wildcard gaming effectively so that's a smart decision on Cubsy's part then running the master shapeshifter with feral affinity to add some extra damage to it his team it's an interesting build and unique to him on cloud nine and their mage warlock druid so if you're at home wondering what Cubsy is running you can check on the extension and pull all of that information for your you yourself to use in competitive play z pine maro and looney are just pinned at the pillar unable to really push out but even still Tossing out some counter pressure. Wealthy man hovering at about 
game currently. Yeah, and I mean, obviously it's worth noting that these teams, they have add-ons, you know, there's a couple of changes. They don't have uh, the PvE trinkets, for example, on the tournament server, so that's going to be slightly different. Uh, despite the fact they don't have the gear of the old gods, though, they're definitely doing the old gods bidding, slaying each other throughout this tournament. It's been fantastic to watch. It's been a good day of World of Warcraft PvP. It's a good game five here to see who's going to go through to the upper bracket final tomorrow. Maro, once again, the life cocoon from Looney to keep him stable. The, uh, the Infernals there, actually, from channels, didn't really achieve too much. Definitely one of the least impactful ones we've seen from Cloud9 so far. That was the Icy Veins as well from Wealthy Man. That big offensive push, just one little life cocoon. That's where the Mistweaver becomes so strong because you have that massive single target bubble you can apply on such a short cooldown. I'm just wondering if Wildcard Gaming are going to just go for Whittle down the team, stay at the pillar, or if they're going to go for coordinated crowd control assaults. So far, crowd control has been effective. With Cyclone on Cubsy, two members of the team low, follow up with Paralysis, but Channel once again denies it with the double mortal coil. Another opening closed by Cloud9 and Channel. Cubsy looks like he's moving in, stunning up Looney, but without running Cyclone, can't follow it up with anything. Morrow gets bursted. Channel's still actually low on health. Despite the fact that Wildcard Gaming are on the run, they're still putting up a fight. I actually wonder if. Cyclone could be useful for Cubsy in this matchup. I guess he's favoring the additional damage from the Master Shapeshifter, but that really depends on him, you know, being in cat form firstly to even get benefit from that uh, on a talent. And maybe the Cyclones at low health against the Mistweaver in particular could actually be really useful on those life cocoons. We'll have to see how the game plays out. Damage is normally king uh, when it comes to these wizard cleaves, so I can definitely respect the choice from Cubsy. Looney, once again, has been doing a tremendous job. This is the other strength of the Mistweaver is that his mana is just so good as mana management. Still at 80% after five minutes of healing through this deadly Mage Lock Druid. Ultimate low on health and able to stabilize for now as Cubsy sits through a leg sweep. Looney gets feared, z backs him up, Tremor Totem breaks that, crowd control effect. Wealthman needs to be careful, cannot yep. afford to go down, throw away game five and go down to the lower bracket. They do not want to go down into those murky waters if they do not have to. They've set up themselves so well for victory here in this best of five now against wildcard gaming. Can Cloud9, the number one seeded team from North America, keep the dream alive? And it is important to note that the first place team or team from this tournament will qualify directly to BlizzCon. And if Cloud9, the top point earner from North America, wins it, their points suddenly don't matter. And if you're every other team in North America below them, you have a better opportunity at qualifying. So if you're a North American fan, you're cheering for North America. On the other hand, if you're a European fan, the same case is so, and you're cheering for Europe. So you don't want to go anywhere. Even if your favorite team is eliminated, Still, the other teams have a chance to contribute to their victory later on in the year. Yeah, more so than normal. You, if you fancy a region, you want any of your teams to do well, you've got to make sure they all do well. It's a mutually beneficial situation. I actually caught off the corner of my eye Method Black looking at this series longingly because they will see the winner of this as their biggest rival for the tournament. So they're going to have a keen eye on this one, seeing what strategies the teams are doing and ultimately who comes up on top. They will, of course, be on our next series, the boys versus Method Black. Stay tuned for that one. Now we're starting to hit dampening, 10% healing reduction for all members of this map. Looney starting to maybe push for offensive CC. That's the question we have is, how is the win condition going to play out for Wildcard Gaming? Previously, they've just dotted everyone, but so far this game, they've been ignoring Cubsy to some extent, just going for little crowd controls with the in cap, uh, potentially with stuns coming out of Looney as well, whilst favoring the DPS and Wealthy Man. I think he's done a good job of dealing with it so far. Yeah, most certainly has. Lightning Lasso, huge hits here from Z-Pi, but Maro isn't able to really back him up. He's actually in bear form. Channel counter-aggressing and protecting his friend with not only peels, but just raw pressure as well. 14% dampening, and it's just going to go up and up and up. And the mana of the healers, it's going to go down, down, down. So this game inevitably will conclude, but I could easily see this being a cross-kill matchup. I'm just trying to like yeah. predict some, some moments here. I, I'm predicting... A one versus one at the end a of this. A one versus one. You heard it's it here. and Looney. <laughs> Looney, oh, wow. Well, this is a very specific situation, and if I'm wrong, I don't care, because if I'm right, it's amazing. If you're, you're right, okay. it's, you're definitely right. If it goes down to a 1v1 with the two healers, I will eat my shoe. I think it's highly unlikely. Oh, that's... that's <laughs> but, you might uh, eat your words, too. I might. I definitely will eat my words if that <laughs> happens, but I, I, I mean, we'll see. It's definitely going to come down to close. You can see Cloud9 are a little bit more reserved in this game. I actually not sure that... 
I necessarily like that because the Infernals, they pushed so hard in the previous two games. Maybe they feel like against the Mistweaver, they will have that win condition of, you know, rest of Druids do more healing than Mistweavers, hence at the end of the game, uh, Cubsy will surely out heal the damage better than Looney. I'm not 100% convinced that's true though, you know, like, oh. where if the Cranes do a lot of damage, you see damage over onto Cubsy. If Cubsy had died, Sid, obviously, I wouldn't have had to eat my shoe. Hey, so not, I can see I'm why you got so I'm excited. I'm not making there. any pets. I, uh, you're the one that's putting a yeah. lot on the line there. I'm just, I'm chilling. I'm just sitting here. Well, well what Nimpoike shoes taste like. <laughs> Probably very shiny, Rich. Just, just, just Wait, like what is orange. shiny? Isn't a flavor. Uh, a shiny can be a flavor. I want it? shiny to be a flavor. <laughs> but we see the lasso coming in onto Channel's big damage once again. Oh, Mano on Cubsy. He's been doing such a good job of you know using the biggest map that we will ever see to run away for those drinks. We see Channel now. Uh, I, I honestly would love to see him push in more. I, I feel like. There's not really too much threat at this point in the game. Those Infernals can be really deadly. Just go for it, you know? You are burning down Lumi's mana. He's never going to drink in this game. I, I, I'm i curious if they're actually going to win this one the later it goes. I feel like I'm watching a snowball fight between these members just <laughs> casting over and over on each other. The healing is it's starting to become very difficult for both sides as Maro is trying to recover and struggling. Will he be able to? Multiple Glider's Maledic, Shadow Melt from Maro and Dispel from Looney denies that burst and that kill opportunity, but Zipai is still rotting down. The pressure is so much in favor of Cloud9. Their Mage Warlock Druid is on a whole nother level. It is out of this world. If they can keep up this momentum, they're looking solid. Wave the Crane finally active. Looney has waited until 29% dampening to activate this first wave of the crane. He's not able to find the ice block. Wealthy Man repositions with the Demonic Gateway and avoids that push. And this is where I was saying strategically, what is Wildcard Gaming's game plan? Are they just going to stay at the pillar and just attack and hope they win? Or is Looney going to push forward with Way of the Crane and they play Protect the Mistweaver, deny the crowd control, and add the extra damage for a big burst kill? They tried to do the big burst kill there. Wealthy Man denied it with perfect positioning. Now they're going back to the Whittle Them Down strategy. Wealthy Man's forced to retreat, but they've left Chanimal quite overextended. Cubs is moving forward he's gonna jump on Maru bash him up Tanimal's moving forward but gets close line not able to find any crowd control but it may not matter Wealth Man is just soloing Maru at this point Live Cocoon it almost looks like Powered Shield at this point with 33% dampening, reducing its effectiveness. Chanimal in trouble as Cubsy is interrupted. Wealthy Man equally so. Morrow has to retreat away, and we're getting closer and closer to potentially Adrian eating his shoe. <laughs> I mean, you're really making me choke on my words now. Thank you for that one, Sid. Looney was able to restore his mana a little bit there, and one of the things that's making this game go so long is I feel like both teams don't want to commit their offensive cooldowns because they're waiting for the other team to do so. Like, Morrow could press his incarnation at any point Point, but he knows if he does that, Cloud9 will just back off, and then that will be one less threat that Wildcard Gaming have if the Infernals are to come down. And it's the same for Chanimal, you know? Like, if he uses Infernal, maybe Wildcard Gaming just uses the Incarnation, and then for Cloud9 to push in would be kind of detrimental since they would tank so much damage in the process. Both oh. teams just kind of playing this game of chicken, I guess, to some extent. Like, you're you saying that because he's a I mean, I wasn't, but that is an excellent, uh, an excellent anecdote. Had it been the intention, and we see the other, the other win condition that Wildcard Gaming does kind of have is Zipai being an elemental shaman against a mage. Like a couple of times, we've seen Wealthy Man just chunk low as dampening starts to stack up, and Wealthy Man stops being 100%, starts being you know 60, 70%. That becomes all the more prominent. It has been a slow battle here between Cloud9 and Wildcard Gaming, but I will tell you, in the final seconds, this is going to be the most chaotic game you have ever seen. <laughs> oh yes. You do not want to go anywhere here between these tightness rosters. Chanimal, well-timed interrupt on Zipai, denies that lightning lasso. They need to make sure they do not let any of those sneak through, otherwise likely to be their own lives. Wincher on Cubsy, both make it to burst. He blinks away, but a star surge is flying through. Both of them barely maxes the range and avoids more follow-up damage, but Cubsy can't even stabilize him. 43% healing reduction. Cloud9 have battled it out, but despite Ooh. winning the first blind pick, they're falling behind. Dude, I'm starting to look at the player cameras and see the sweat on the brows of all of these players. They've worked so hard to get here. This has been a grueling five-game series. We're about 10 minutes or eight minutes at least into this one, and now is the moment when it all comes down to. All of that effort will be wasted if you lose this game. The intensity is starting to build. Both these healers looking perfectly reasonable on mana, but it's so hard at this point just for the teams to top each other. You can see Cubsy, he burns through his mana pool so fast as a druid at this stage in the game. He can't top his team off. Wealthy Man, oh. if he gets earth shocked at that health, he dies. He dies immediately. It's so scary for them. They have to track every little proc from each other. They have to play the game so precisely at this point. But Maru is the one taking the heat right now. Disrespect, Cubsy not Glyre's medallion. Infernals are down. 
How are Wild Card Gaming going to stay alive? Cubs, he's in cap form. He's dishing out pain. Wealthy Man's blinking in, but Wave of the Crane gets activated. It's Mortal Coiled away. Channel doesn't get the Chaos Bolt. Channel needs a Chaos Bolt. Is he going to find it? No, they're retreating away. They see the Wave of the Crane. They're going to respect it and say, okay, let's wait for that to end. We don't want to be walking in and get a kick to the face. Wave of the Crane now gone. 50% dampening. Maybe Ooh. we're going to see records, but Wealthy Man needs to be careful. Star Search in the sky. Very low on health paralysis. Ice block yeah. has to be traded out. Wild Card Gaming, they're starting to establish dominance here. 51% dampening. I, I think that was a, um, it, it was such a clean play from Wild Card Gaming. You saw the coils coming oh. out. Myro used his trinket. He got the beam on the Infernal push. And the Infernal is the big win condition for Cloud9. Now that that's out the way, I just feel like there's such an elite for Wild Card Gaming. I mean, Cubsy, you might be going for another drink here at this moment in time. Myro dropping low. Needs to be careful. Maledict's committed here. This this is the big Maldek push from Cloud9. Mara should respect it, uses the renewal. I Channel. like that play. Both healers completely um, Channel struggling. Wealthy man with one ice block left. This game is not longer, much longer uh, in the history book. If there's a Nether Ward reflected Star Search kill on Maro, then they'll be sick here. Can Channel nail it? He's in trouble, but so is Maro. One more way of the crane, but I don't think he's got the mana. Maro ducks recover. He's just not going back up in health. Cubsy gets stunned by Maro in desperation. Cyclone just to deny the Feral Affinity, but he's, oh, he's cornered. Yes. Wealthy man on one side, Channel on the other. There's nowhere to run there is no safety at 57 percent dampening looney trying to scrounge back in line of sight channel still being pressured it's all up to z -Pi. he has to solo channel while maro stabilizes will he be able to do it i'm not sold just yet no interview for another minute on maro if he can get to that point for way of the crane maybe they can push them over channel still getting bursted by the lightning lasso z -Pi trying to carry the team Oof. dyer's maledict channel on the run maro is still low adrian shu is looking tasty maro gets bursted <laughs> down potentially here is he gonna fall marks him maro Fall. Channel's still in trouble. z Pi uh -huh. No defense. Looney's punching oh. him. Is he going to take him out here? I can tell that Adrian's clenching his teeth. <laughs> Channel gates back away. Avoids death. Wow. And Adrian avoids an awkward situation. Cloud9, they've done it. But they're going to play. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth 